Australian magpies singing at the airport to start our adventure. And we're at Sydney airport at the moment. Just picked up the car rental. A Mitsubishi, it's an automatic which doesn't please the driver. Now here's the driver. Open your window. Right, I've got one question to ask you. Because I haven't told the uh, people that are watching this. Well, two. First of all, where are we? Um, Sydney Airport. Second question, what's the date? Christmas Day. <laughs> <Time. laughs> we just got here, Christmas Day, it's red hot. And we just want to get away from Sydney, so we're off. Okay. We're at the airport at Sydney because it's um, one of the main airports on the east coast of Australia, which is uh, where all the eels come in from the Pacific Ocean. You see, the Australian freshwater eels breed in the Pacific Ocean and the young elvers are carried by currents to the east coast. Uh, they then access the rivers and penetrate as far inland as the, the rivers go, really. Um, as far as I know, there's no freshwater eels in the rest of Australia. The east coast is a narrow strip which is backed by the Great Dividing Range. This forms um, a kind of mountainous spine which runs roughly parallel with the coast. Um, it's here that we're going to concentrate our efforts to catch big eels. Running to the west of this mountain range, all the waters flow into the biggest and best known river network in Australia the Murray-Darling River system. Incidentally, Australia has less available fresh water than any other continent except Antarctica. So this system is of great importance as it brings life to vast areas, areas of the outback, which would otherwise be barren desert. Having spent Christmas looking at this map in the motel room at Sydney, we're going to now drive up the coast towards Brisbane. Well, we've made it to our fertile strip of land in between the Great Dividing Range and the coast. We found a big reservoir. known as Lake Glenbourne and it's a national park. Exotic venue to us. Seen our first kangaroo. Game bouncing past the tent, gave us a giggle. And we didn't have much bait last night. We failed to film until now, it's just dawn. But what a night's fishing we've had. I keep getting funny little bites on my bobbin. Small lift bites. And it trundled off really, really slowly. Couldn't imagine what it was. Anyway, Pete struck into one of these slow bites and played in something. He said, I've got something on, but it's not fighting much. And he landed his first ever turtle. I've had two eels and Pete's had two. Have you had two, Pete? Yeah. What weight were yours? Uh, 14. Uh, 14, 6 and a 13 something or other. 13.4. 13, 13, I think that's right, remember that. Plus how many turtles? Yeah. Two, two turtles and uh, <laughs> a golden perch and two silver perch. And I've had two eels. We've decided that um, we're only photoing eels over 15, so I've just kept the 16 in the sack. Well, we, we, we took quick snaps of some with a flash, but we've kept one in the sack, which we'll show you shortly. Barry's just pulling his personal best freshwater eel from uh, Australia. Hey! Right in the sack there. Hey! 
fast anglers off out there in a bit. Catch last night, Pete. Yeah. Turtles. Loads of turtles. And what was the biggest deal? Eleven. We've been here four nights and Pete's had a double every night so far. So that's not bad going. Yeah, yeah. and there's bigger stuff to come in here. There's a photo of a 50 up in the kiosk. Massive. How big was that deal again, Pete? Uh, it's 57. 57 pound deal for Lembo. Oh, there, young lady. Oh, it's a bit warm. How warm, Pete? not quite used to the heat but we've managed to get the campsite get our tents under this tree a bit of shade I haven't got the fly sheet on the tent it's too hot it's the inner tent This is actually on the campsite where we were camping, and uh, they're everywhere. Sun's gone down. Still on Lake Glenbourne or Glenbourne Lake. Hence the speedboat. And we're on a sort of dam wall thing tonight. Just going to show you Pete's rods. What are they, Pete? The Murray Cod Low rods that we rated from uh, ten pound to thirty pound lines. You got a bite there. Pretty, uh, How long? Uh, eight foot. They're not as long as we'd like, but. I think they were carbon fibre, were they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a cheap, uh, a solid tip to make them slightly cheaper. Cost us about 30 quid. 
We bought two each to just for this trip. You can't get shorter rods. We're just fishing a bunch of worms at the moment, trying to catch some bait. Struggling, but we need the bait so it'll be dark soon. There we go. Right, that's what happened to me last night with a big eel. Exactly the same thing. Yeah, exactly the same thing happened to me. Don't shine it in my eyes, please. You're gonna bring it to the light? Long way up. Just to fill you, and Pete's just bringing a big eel up the damn wall. Up towards me. Oh. The tricky bit is that we haven't got a net big enough to get them in, we don't think. How big does it look, Pete? Oh, baby, baby. It's a 15 or something. Look at it go. Oh, baby, baby. Yeah. Yeah. What's this for a bit of eel land? How to land a 15 pound eel? Too big, I'll come and help you, Pete. The light's gone on. There's just a little bit. Is it an eel on? We're down well at the minute. We just had a big eel. This looks like the second big eel of the night. Unfortunately, I'll probably have to put this camera down to net it. What the hell? It's not our line, by the way. Yeah. Well, someone snapped off with a fish on out there, and it's picked that up. Got a monster here. Really. This is my personal best deal from any country ever. Certainly, personal best from this country. 
23 for 23 pounds, 4 ounces. And it looks it. Xander! Bottle deal. That is New South Wales' biggest power station. This 3,000 acre gravel pit was dug out to provide water to cool the power station. They recycle the warm water back into the power station, back into the lake. Three thousand acre Lake Liddell. We're near the power station, and this is what we get all day long. The power station is next to a massive open site coal mine, and I don't know how much weight's in these, but. Uh, There's an unbelievable tonnage of coal being dragged behind these things. The industrial hellhole of New South Wales. And we're fishing it today. Other rods away with an eel bait on at long range in the deeps. Double. How big? Four or five, five. Small. Small, yeah. Big. These aren't really the eels we're after, but uh, we're hoping that the daddy of them all's leading the pack out here tonight. They seem to have this theory, the Australians, don't they, about uh, having one big eel? Yeah. That uh, sort of leader of the the pack on each shore. And it's full of carp, which are vermin here. We're under strict instructions to kill any carp we catch. We've already caught an eel in daylight. No. Got one on the other rod now.
It's full of carp there, we're going to chop up later. And this water is the, it shows us it's the deepest bit of the lake because we've got this little, uh, little thing we work on at the moment. The deeper the water, the bigger the eel. And this is by far the deepest bit of the lake. Oh, damn, I've got one on the other rod there. Is it this same one? Oh, it's a turtle. A little so and so. That's around the other line. Oh, what's that? Something else that's classed as vermin. They go mad if you put these back. Now, if you can unravel the other line, it's gone round. relative to the size. It's quite the size of that. Yeah, massive. Away from this tree, there's a path that's actually made by the ants. That's the Nantes Highway, and they're going up to a big mound at the top there. So if we follow the highway along, somewhere there'll be junctions. There's a junction with another path coming in, leading to the other tree. They seem to be stripping some sort of fruit from the tree and taking it back as we get closer to the ant hill the highway is getting much bigger and there's more activity Biggest mother of an ant hill I've ever seen. They can get a bit aggressive, these things, when you walk on the territory. Do it again. <laughs> They're actually, this whole ant hill is getting a bit aggressive, so I'm going to back off. Because they do survive. hurt. They're a bit big. temperature has been over 100 degrees every day since we've been here. How hot's it been Pete? It's been well over 100. At the moment it's uh, 92. 92 today and the sun's not out. We've not been able to stand the sun so until now we've not done much day filming. This is the coldest day we've had. Get 
minute now. Humanely dispatched for eel bait. Big that on this rod. Might need the net. Double that, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Just the solar rod out. Good net. No beach. Five or six? Yeah. Deep gravel. Any thoughts on where are we? New water and all that. Yeah, we're on the uh, uh, lake called Sinclair. Saint Clair. Uh, the site manager who farms the land around here has got a lot of knowledge on this lake. He's just been and told us that the place has been commercially netted. He's got the card and the phone number of the guy that's netted it. The first time the guy came he caught 60 tonnes of eels and the next time he caught 50 tonnes. 110 tonnes of eels gone out of the lake. He says that eels can get in because the small elvers can wriggle round the dam in the grass but this lake has only spilt over once since it was built and uh, there's no escape for all those elvers that come up into this system. The sun's just setting over the back of the hill. And now's the time for the eel angler to emerge. You can hear some frogs starting to warm up for the night chorus. All the creatures of the night are lurking in anticipation. We waited all day for this sun to go down. Now what we've found on this shore is that there's very thick weed going 20 to 30 yards out and we're having to cast over that and then it's clear water it, but the water drops off into deeper water and your line sinks deeply over the back of the weed so we'll have to drag the eels up and over or through the weed it's only soft weed, it's just dense our gear can rip through it going off next to my rod Stop making the noise when you start digging them up. Now, what I thought was a frog, Pete's just found out. Could you hold it up for the camera? Ah, 
and we're not sure exactly what that is. Pete's just dug it up. It wasn't a frog. It was this critter. And we're going to try and draw the eels towards us tonight with some burley. Burley in Australia, ground bait in Britain. A bag of chicken livers, a dozen eggs, and what's the other? We've got some cat, cat mints. Cat mints. We're hoping that a big oily slick will come off from this bait. Now before when we've baited up to draw the eels to the shore, we've been in New Zealand where it wasn't as hot as this. Since we've now realised that the water right at the edge next to the shore is depleted of oxygen, the eels will not come right to the shore. So this time we're going to have to throw the stuff out a bit further into the lake. We're actually fishing over some weed in the edge here and the water is deeper past the weed. Hence the weed beds end as the water gets deeper because the weed can only grow up to a certain depth of water. So we're going to cast out into the clear water and we're going to throw the bait over the weed into this clearer water to draw the Draw the eels in from far and wide. With a bit of luck, the eels will pick the scent up for miles and we'll have a bumper catch tonight. Burly balls. Burly balls. That's mint. Well, as we know, it's the albumen in the eggs, which... Um, Eels can scent from miles away, especially these long fin eels. Of course, the long fin eels are more predatory than uh, the eels we generally fish for in the UK. They're uh, beasts. Eggy enough. Put it into a nice verbal burly bowl. We'll do each rod at a time. One, two, three, four. Over the weed just nicely. We'll have that all along the shore, eh, where we are. Yep, that's some... Drabble's mega eel mix. Feed the turtles off a bit. As the sun sets over St. Clair Lake, burly man, ground baits up. Mm. Uh, in previous fishing trips, we fished for big long fin eels in New Zealand. There, we placed our bait right in at the edge, and the eels would come right up to the shore to get the bait. But here in Australia, the water is hotter, much hotter. Consequently, the marginal shallows are depleted of oxygen. Eels don't come into this hot, deoxygenated water. Furthermore, we've discovered that eels will not survive in a sack if it's placed in the margins. Sadly, we discovered this with the first big eel we caught. 16 and a half pound of eel died in a sack, drowned in oxygen depleted waters. Since then we've been returning eels as soon as we've caught them so they can carry on with their life cycle and return to the sea to breed. And after the sun's gone down, the creatures of the night are lurking waiting for full time. Here's one having an exotic meal on the back. What are we on tonight? Vegemite and dry ride beaten. So, it's 
sits back in anticipation with his exotic meal and waits for the eels to home in far and wide. Torch ready, try and film him if he catches an eel. We don't have a lot of success in that filming, but we'll try. Kettle on. where we put the bait in earlier down on the shore so it went in there and it's built up this slick which is travelling across the lake now and that is actually caused by the oils floating on the surface and calming the ripple out as you can see everywhere else is a fair ripple except for the area of water adjacent to our rod. It's uh, extremely important to attract the eels in amongst our swim. We've already seen quite a few fish attracted into this. So we know it works. That's a good double. Thirteen. Thirteen, thirteen, that. Yeah. Twelve nights of strip left. We're back on uh, St. Clair. Of New South Wales today. Found that none of the waters allow public access. We're back on St. Clair near Tingle. 
Twelve nights. This bit one. And what are we up to the base today? Mum's kidney. Chicken giblets and uh, mum's kidney. And when it rains, you'd expect the rivers to be full of water, but the uh, farmers all drink to fill up their little irrigation ponds instead. Yeah. Dry cracked riverbed. I think this this reservoir is only how many percent full was it? 61. 61. Um, the, the reservoir we went to today was only 31 percent full, and the fullest it had ever been was 70 percent since it was built 20 years ago. This is what we're saying about the don't overflow, and the eels are all trapped here. The small ones, migratory instinct, brings them up here when it's raining, but they can climb up vertical walls. These bigger eels can't get back out again. Stuck in the weed. Getting any on it? Yeah, all the way. Right. Inching it through the weed, it's, uh, it's a bit of a battle with any size deal. You just can't put enough pressure onto it that you'd like because of the, the light gear. It just has to shake its head in the weed and it's Severed the line. Oh. oh, just like what I was saying. I think I tried to put too much pressure on then. Started rushing it. Yeah. But I got him up then, you know. Each at St. Clair. Piece of steak on each rod. No tents up. If it rains in the night, I'll put one up. Otherwise, I'm just going to lie on the beach. Got one. Yeah, looks like it. Real nicely left up. That's it. Nice one, little frigate. There's the third in. Drop a muffle on. Yeah. See him going Beat back. Steak. Can't believe it, the Australians, when we say we put these back. Quite a nice one, that, isn't it? Mm. It's gone, the light. Pete's just caught one of these uh, eel-tailed catfish, as they're known over here. 
It's actually got an eel's tail. We're only filming it with our Petzl head torches. I hope you can see us. Okay, it's got actually uh, an eel's tail, you see. This spine. Where's the spine? There's two. Where's the spine? There. Right. And it's venomous, that? Yeah, highly. Highly. Make yield. There's another one on the top there that's also venomous. Yeah, that's good to see that. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll, on his, one on his dorsal fin and one on each petrol, petrol fin. And he's got a fine set of whiskers. What did you catch that on, Pete? It was on worms. Trying a bunch of worms to see if we can get a short fin eel. But really do have to be careful with these. That's a bit of a nasty zap. They're actually a bit mottled coloured, aren't they? Like the yeah, like, like the eels, like, like these mottled eels, like these mottled rhine and willa rhine hard. Thick mouths, like a catfish. Very fat paunch on it. It's been stuffing itself. This one. It's got the force of it. And we've driven down to Victoria, and we're on the Mitchell River. It's actually sort of tidal here. The flow is running off at the moment. It was backing up the other way before. It's connected to a massive series of inland lakes. Sure, if this was fresh water or tidal. But uh, we came to have a look. The mosquito just bit me through the shirt then. <laughs> we came to have a look and it was quite obviously fresh water because it's full of carp. Actually, I think this is a shoal and mullet. But there's carp bubbling extensively right in the margins and swirling in front of us. We won't be catching them tonight because we haven't got the bait. We're on the, a lamb's heart hoping for the eels as it goes dark. The mullet are actually freshwater mullet, not saltwater mullet. All the freshwater rivers, even the trout streams and fast rivers are full of mullet. Curtain hook for a bite indicator. Open bay alarm. Alarm at the front that will bleep every time the line goes over the runner. Now if we follow the line down into the water, we'll see unmistakable sign of carp. These carp are just bubbling away there. We haven't put any bait in. Ooh. 
Big eel action on the riverbank here. Is there a struggle to get in the net these biggies? Who's done it? In the net. That's a nice one. Yeah, you've got to watch these mottled eels, they'll have you. I'm going to hook up again with the hook. Unhooked anyway. Nice one. Yeah. 12 12, I make that. Smashing first river double. Ooh. See that red bend. Scrap well though, don't they, these river eels? Can you hear the line? Yeah, singing. That's a shit tackle, aren't they? He's bigger than the last one. Damn. Monster. Where's it gone now? Back to the depths. They can put a bend in your head, these eels. Oh, oh lost it. Oh, look. It bitten you off. Snapped the line. It snapped in the upper trace. Right. Safely in that. Took a bit of doing. going to look at the spots particularly. Can you see those leopard skin? Now the fin, the reason it's called a long fin, got a fin here along the bottom comes up to its uh, anal vent and the top one comes much further on it which is why it's called a long fin. The short fin the fin on the top is the same as the fin on the bottom, it ends opposite the fin on the bottom. So this is a long fin, now it's actually mottled, sort of mottled markings, spotted almost. 
and the long finials in New Zealand aren't. They don't have these spots. Um, I think these ones are. Is it Anguilla Reinhardi? Is it? Mm -hmm. yeah. And the these spotted ones. Nice set of gnashes on it. Anything else you want to add, Pete? Yeah, just about the theory about the longer fin on the top. Um, we, we found these eels fight actually different to the eels in the UK. And uh, more like a dogfish sort of fight to them. Yeah, so we suspect that with this fin being longer, it gives them different um, propulsion. Of, yeah, dynamics of propulsion, and they, they seem to bend the front bit and shake the head more. Mm. Um, Whereas our English eels use move the tail this bit where the fin is mm. the same. When they do move that bit, they just go sideways with it instead yeah. of head shakers. Tail shake instead of tail shaking short fin eels. Yeah. But they've just been snapped off, so they're not that weak. They're, mm. they're very heavy. Mm. 15 pounds of eel leans on your line, you know about it. Anyway, I'll put them back, what was it, 11, 6. Big enough to get them in, we don't think. How big does it look, Pete? 